we know you don't give interviews and uh, get on podcasts, so we're definitely appreciative of you blessing us with Thank your presence. You. Absolutely. I'm glad to be. I think this might be my first podcast. Yeah, yeah. and you're last. last. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's I'm right. your manager now. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the mask. What's happening, my boy? What's good, family? Another day in paradise. You already know what it is. Yeah, and as it's another day in paradise, man, it's always it makes it greater to have such beautiful talent that comes inside of the BTM lounge full of beauty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So without further ado, man, we got to <laughs> g- get right into it. So with this next guest is an award-winning singer and songwriter. She's also an actress, too. That's right. Through all of her accolades and all of the things that she's accomplished, the thing that I admire most is her ability to empower, inspire all of the young kids, young ladies in particular, across the globe. Bro, that's big. Major. That means she's not selfish. Facts. Straight out of Decatur, where it's greater. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gents, welcome to the BTM Lounge, Carrie Hilson. Hey. <laughs> Miss Carrie, baby. You do it. Please Lord, stop. Have to do it. Because somebody got to do it everywhere Maybe. I go. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? I'm amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Finally got you in the lounge. Yeah. Go behind the mask a little bit. Yeah. Now we I'm know, happy to be here. We know you don't give interviews and uh, get on podcasts, so we're definitely appreciative of you blessing us with Thank your presence. You. Absolutely. I'm glad to be. I think this might be my first podcast. Yeah, yeah. and I you're last. That's <laughs> <laughs> my last. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's I'm right. your manager now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Decatur, where it's greater. Mm-hmm. That's where it all started now. Mm-hmm. Like, take us back. Like, how did you get into the arts at such a young age, mm. growing up in Decatur. Yeah. Um, I had it as early, like my earliest memories of singing and feeling like there's something special when I sing based on these adults reacting to me around me, whether I'm in the car with family, whether we're at a family reunion, whether we're just, I just you know, my mother has a daycare center, I'd be there and I would just, Singing was in my blood. My dad sang and pressed a record when he was in college. And you know what I mean? He was in a quartet. So it's in my blood. I got it honest. Right. But I was as early as three. I remember always looking up and people asking me to sing one of the songs that would be on the radio or one of my favorites. Like, it was always like, sing, carry, sing, carry, sing, carry. So I remember, you know, my earliest memories. But um, my mother really cultivated it. My mother believes in, like, Seeing a gift, exposing you to everything and allowing you to navigate or to, um, what's the word, naturally gravitate towards where you want to be. Right. You know, so we were in karate, we were in piano, we were in ballet, we were in African dance. Oh God, we she gave you options. Swimming, <laughs> yes. We literally did every skiing. We did, we would only do that year, once a year. But literally, she, tennis, like there was nothing, she, horseback riding. We did it all, <laughs> and on a consistent basis. And she just, she was like, my goal is to expose you to as much as possible. I don't want any child out there of any other race being able to say that they've done more than my black kids can do. Mm. And that's, you know, so she really cultivated it. It was like um, piano lessons, um, which I kind of, I kind of manipulated my piano teacher oh, into okay. being the piano player while I sang. I was supposed to be learning how to play, and I did. I learned the chords. Is that a regret now? Not at all. Because I, I, I play enough to sing along. Like, yeah. I got to a certain point in the lesson, I was like, uh, okay, I got it. I would like to sing. So first it was like, I said, can you start coming early and like play a gospel song and I could sing along? Mm. And he would do that, and then before long, that would be our whole lessons. And I remember my mom would like peek in like, she didn't listen. <laughs> this is not what I'm paying for. This ain't part of the plan. <laughs> this is not part of the plan. So when the recital came up, he's like, uh, 
I'm pretty, you don't know any of the songs. You don't know any songs in this book. Yes, you can read music. Yes, you know, you da da. But he was like, I'm gonna allow you to be the only person to sing in this recital. Um, but you have to compose the music, write the lyrics, arrange the backgrounds, format the song. So I had to, I'm 11 uh, so years old. So that's where the writing comes that's from. That's where the writing came from. So I'm just grateful for the upbringing that my, you know, that, that, that I was exposed to enough things to be able to land on some true gifts, you know? Right. Yeah. And being exposed to so much, it comes a time in your, in your childhood where you're like, you know what? This is the thing that I, I want to do. Yeah. Like for us, obviously, it was it was football. Yeah. But what was the point where you're like, you know what? Singing, songwriting, acting—that's my thing. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think it came down to the deciding factor between. First, it was like okay, swimming versus basketball. I remember these decisions. Music was always a constant, right? But sports kind of took over in my life over yeah. music before there was an outlet to express the music or to pursue it. What particular so, sports? Uh, swimming and, and, and then basketball. Okay. And cheerleading is a sport too, so I did cheer for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but I loved, I loved swimming and I was really good at it. Like... I would win, I was in a league and I would win um, county and then I would win state. And then when I was 14, I went to the junior nationals and competed mm. for Georgia. So, wow. So yeah. you really, you bout that life. <laughs> like, so we can look that up you because can, we get a lot of people here talk, they talk yeah, yeah. about <laughs> all of the awards that they and have won. And yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, we just can't, we can't find, can't find it. it. <laughs> well, now, I wonder though. I've never even tried. I hope someone can. Mm. Because I would be interested to see it. But this is the 80s. This is the late 80s. Yeah. Or early yeah. 90s, I guess. Whatever age I would have been. Early 90s. So there were no... I yeah, mean, he wasn't keeping were there up even computers? I can't remember internet, no at what that. point. Yeah, so who was keeping up with that? We had it in paper form. We have our awards. Our, you know, yeah, we yeah. got them on the... She got receipts. <laughs> yeah, we got receipts. <laughs> she got receipts. <laughs> but like, is it... Findable. If anyone, yeah. if no one thinks to like upload it on a site, I guess then it can't be that easy to find. Mm. So, but I was there. Right. Okay, Manhattan, New York. Whatever year that was, I was uh, was I thirteen? I was fourteen. Mm. Um, and then basketball, I loved, which I was um, two years best offensive. I was MVP my senior year. Okay. Um, and captain uh, two years. Two, no, I was, well, was co-captain two years and then captain senior year Jeez. as well as MVP, yeah, and best offensive my 11th and 12th grade year. So I remember that basketball took precedence over swimming yep. before, right? So I made that choice. It's like, ah, I'm trying to be cute. <laughs> I was a jock, but I still, like, you know what I mean? I wanted to be Free. cute. The swimming and hair. As a black woman? That ain't it. That ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> what I ain't gonna do is be showing up bald to school every day. Cause I, you know, anyway, so basketball took that. And then there was another choice on my senior trip. Um, actually before that, I had to make a choice. So I, I had joined a group when I was, was I 14 or 15? Joined a girl group. And we were performing all over the city showcasing for all of the top execs. And I do mean all, from L.A. Reid to Sylvia Rohn to, like, Clive to, you know, everybody. So um, now that I had had an outlet to express my musical talent, mm -hmm. which I hadn't had in a very long time, or if ever. Like, I remember my first studio experience was 12 years old, whatever. So at 14, I'm like, okay, I'm in a group, I'm performing, da da, da. And then I'm being looked at. I'm aware that scouts are coming to the games in high school for basketball. So I'm being forced to think and now decide. Got to make a which decision. One you can't really do. And what decided for me was that, um, I guess it was my time at first. And dad was like presenting that, like, do you really want to play? You know, it's going to take all your time. He knows I'm, I was in a group 
by the time I'm a senior, he, I was in a group for a few years, like mm. performing and whatever. And um, I just singing had to singing had to win. It had no. I had no choice. Now that I had an outlet, oh, I'm taking this all the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just was that. And on my senior trip, I got my record deal. At 17, when I graduated, I actually orchestrated the senior trip and had to leave on day two or three. I had to leave on day three. I got a call on day two of the trip that I orchestrated. Right. Multiple schools. We're all in Cancun for spring break. And, you and put I get the call the on. Trip. I put together as one of the. I had um, to dip. <laughs> I had to dip. <laughs> Bars. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he auditioning over here. <laughs> Back so up. yeah, and I had to leave. And on day three, I had to get a flight early that morning. Um, and I left everyone. There was a liaison, so she ended up, you know. And. Uh, the rest is history because that was that put the battery in my back. Like getting yeah. a deal at seventeen, you know I what I mean? Think. I know it ain't no regrets. Right. No regrets, and I never looked back. Even though that group didn't make it, the next group I was in didn't make it. People kept putting groups around me because it was the thing back then, nineties, you know. Yep. And well, two thousand. Uh, I graduated in year two thousand, so that was a thing back then, you know. But I really all the time knew I wanted to be solo. And you were pinning hits from a teenager mm -hmm. um, for yourself, obviously, mm -hmm. on some stars like Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige. Mm -hmm. um, with that type of catalog, I guess, what was your <clears throat> favorite song that you either wrote or recorded? How many kids you got, two times? Three. Are some of your favorites. I was about to say. <laughs> okay, I yeah, I got you. This. Yeah, okay. okay. See, yo, you was about to, all right, yeah, uh -huh. I got you. Yeah. But you know, some parents might have an answer. Like I actually do nah, have a favorite I love them kid. More. I love them you more. can't say it on camera, oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad might answer that. My mom might answer that. Like mm. she you kid, you know. But yeah, that's really hard to do. But I will say, for different reasons, I like different ones. There's mm. like a category of like this is the most lucrative. This mm. has funded a lot of, <laughs> you know, my life. Yeah. Um, and then there's. Oh man, I really love my arrangements on that one. Like I really like the way I'm cutting through, even if, or I like that I'm singing backgrounds on that one because I love that I really blended with their that artist's voice. Mm -hmm. There were moments like that. Like I was proud of Tony Braxton, mm -hmm. of a record I have on Tony Braxton's album. And I was like, oh my God, you know, like this is cool. It was like, and then there's your passion projects. You're just like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what this is gonna do, but so I can't, I can't, I can't like, the catalog is very vast. And every time people attempt to list my catalog, they're missing probably 30 to 40 records. Um, so it's so much that I in the catalog that I just can't. And that's not stunting. It's just my that's, truth. That's what it's it is. The yeah, catalog is the of it. Yeah, but yeah. the point is I can't. I got favorites in categories. I can't choose. Well, just choose. this is one I, I knew personally. but. Okay. Just going back to the early days, working with Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. Britney Spears, mm -hmm. and you see now you've become the heavy hitter mm -hmm. as well. But like, what was that like working with them at such a young age? Um, a dream come true because I grew up watching Britney. I grew up listening to Mary. Yeah. I grew up listening to Usher. I grew up, you know, all the people that I ended. Tony Braxton, yeah. huge fan. I even wrote for Whitney, Whitney Houston. Oh. And I was like, these are people that I was like, uh, I got to work with Babyface. I got to work with so many, Jermaine Dupree, people that I just, so as a youngin, I think it sharpened, um, it sharpened my craft, mm -hmm. being able to be around so many greats. It taught me a lot about what kind of artist I wanted to be. You know, because you're studying, you're there, yeah. and you're present, and you're writing. But, and I'm at that point, I was engineering my own sessions. I was arranging, and I would record, and I would do rough edits after they would leave. You know, I was doing a lot. I was very involved in the process, but I was also there was a part of me that was observant, and I, I kind of, I guess, I crafted how I want to treat people, and and. Um, I mean, that's natural. Being kind is kind of a natural thing, you know what I mean? Being a nice person. But then you Something. might encounter some other things, and you're like, I'll never be that. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. So that really pretty much kind of helped 
shape or yeah. really just influence mm -hmm. your singing career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We we had this uh, a question that we asked before. Had the dream one. Yeah. So what are some of the songs mm -hmm. that you've written mm -hmm. that our audience may not know of? <sighs> um. Hmm. Love in this club remix. I didn't know the Whitney Houston. I, I didn't know that either. It didn't come out. Part. It didn't come out. She gotcha. recorded it. Didn't gotcha, really. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was saying I was honored to work with her. Mm -hmm. She would select a song that I had written and was singing. That's supposed to be Tony Braxton. They might. And I'm on the backgrounds of her song Please. Tony Braxton, please. Mm -hmm. I got to breathe. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Please that. Yeah. Back up all of me. Like those that can hear, those that know my voice would know. Oh, that's, yeah. that's Carrie in the whole song in the background. But I was asked to do that because of how well our voices blended on the record that I wrote, that we had did, done for her. Um, let's see. Oh, God. I rarely think about my catalog. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, they don't know that one. They don't know that one. They don't know that one. There's a lot. You also appeared in, in several films. Like, yeah. what I can appreciate about you is, you don't stay in one lane. You're gifted in a lot of areas. Mm, uh, the inspiration to go into film, I think of Think Like a Man, mm -hmm. also uh, Almost Christmas. Mm -hmm. Which one do you like doing most? The acting or the singing? Uh, you got to catch... Okay, at different times, I prefer one or the other. Like when my father passed, I got more into acting. I had a couple credits, like uh, Chronicles of Riddick and Think Like a Man. Those were pre-grief for me. And I lost my dad at the beginning of 2020. Um, and I dove into acting. I didn't, well, not only could we, you know, shows were stopped, you know, everything. We all had to kind of pivot in some way. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have to do anything. I'm never, but I looked forward to acting because it allowed me not necessarily to run from grieving him, but a reprieve because mm -hmm. we were all, there was no work, there was no busy. Everyone was sitting and thinking and yeah. for me it was crying a lot and I needed to channel some energy into some things. So. Right. That's what acting provided for me. So at different points in my life, I can say, I like the structure of the acting. I like that you know where to be for two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what time you're going to be up. You know where you're going to be. You don't have to be on a plane structure. every day. Yeah. Structure. So in my later years of life, I'm enjoying the structure because I just toured uh, last year. Facts. And listen, I felt every bit of the 40 that I am. <laughs> you getting tired? Did you oh take naps during the day? You that, that 40 year old nap? I wish. <laughs> but as a woman, we're getting ready six hours before the show. Yeah. I'm in the venue. I'm usually one of the first at the venue because I'm a girl. Mm. The rest of the guys might be at KFC. 20 minutes later, they're on stage. Hey, you <laughs> <ready>? <laughs> like, Let's run it. Yeah. You know, so um, it's tough. We don't really get the. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. But I made it through. Yeah, you made it through. I had a, had a good tour. And yeah. you're right here in the lounge. Right here in the lounge. So you got a new project coming up yeah. later this year. Yeah. Would you care I to hope. expound on it? I hope. I hope. <laughs> um, I can say that it answers questions. I can say that I'm proud of it. I can say that... Um that there were a couple of false starts. They were not all me. Mm. There was some like, I don't know, fake PR yeah. or like fans would craft yeah. fake press releases and tweets and things like that. And I'm like, uh, but you know, if you're not thinking to check and a blog post it, then you might get tricked. Um, mm. But there have been false starts. And right before my dad died, like, you know, that was definitely one that I was responsible for. Just that's what I was planning to do, and then that happened. And um, but I feel like I'm closer now to being able. Lately, I've been wondering, like, do I want to go back in? Do I want to? Do I want to record some more? But I, I mean, we have been waiting for quite some time, now. <laughs> and you might as well wait uh, <laughs> like six more months. And let me get some. I'm just kidding. But I've been considering whether or not I want to like 
freshen, okay, liven it up a little bit, take a certain corner. I've been inspired to write, so mm. I'm just that's a good like, thing now. Yeah, it's a good thing. When but the you inspiration know, we hits, that forever. Yeah, yeah. We, could, we could. I could create forever and never release it. That's what I've been doing for ten years: <laughs> is creating and keeping it. So, so basically, it's an open letter to all of your fans, correct? Uh, um, describing the tough times, like the trial and tribulations? Yeah, but not so obvious. It's through the story that I'm telling. Okay. Um, it's revealing in that sense. But I wouldn't say that I made it like an obvious open letter to my fans. I'm not talking to my fans, but through the love story, through what you're hearing, mm -hmm. you'll understand me better. You'll understand the why. Yeah, yeah. So, you ready for it? I'm proud of it. Ready for you it. You seem ready. Yeah. You ready to when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready to. <laughs> Been ready. <laughs> Been ready. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think this is the year, though. I do. Well, we're definitely looking forward to it. Thank you. Carrie, I'm glad you, like, really, you came in here and blessed us with your presence. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because we have strong opinions, and our audience, they like to state out the fact that we need a third party in here, somebody of the opposite sex, because... Mm -hmm. It becomes a little man heavy talk. <laughs> oh, okay. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay. What is Carrie Hilson's love language? Hmm. My primary is quality time, my secondary is physical touch. Do you think that love language is? And two is it, is, is, it, is is four is four of them right? Yeah. It's words five. of words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and gifts, and gifts, and gift giving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I, so we get this question, you know what I mean? But I guess my thought process is: is that like a make or break in a relationship? Is it a you have to have you have to love me in my own love language? Well, it's it may not be conscious, but. I won't be happy if my language isn't spoken. You know what I mean? If you're not, um, I guess, in tune or attentive enough to understand what makes your lady the happiest, mm -hmm. then yeah, uh, it, I'm not gonna be fulfilled and, and you're gonna see the fruits of that, <laughs> okay? Uh, <laughs> whatever that may be. <laughs> so, so you know, if you're not making deposits, don't expect this account to be fat. No, it ain't okay. no, no receipts to look at either, is it? Facts. So, all right, here's my thing. Mm -hmm. But it works but both ways. It does, it does. But isn't love supposed to be unconditional? Um, marriage, I think, is supposed to be unconditional. But until I'm married, I'm very conditional. Okay. <laughs> hey, you messed up my whole shit. No <laughs> lies. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing is, all right. So I think love is. Unconditional, right? Mm -hmm. However, if there is a love language that, say, you one person needs to work on, or maybe is not as adept to fulfilling, mm -hmm. to me that's a condition. So does that take away the love? Does that take away the deposits? If you're depositing everywhere else, but this one area is kind of lacking, it's just like I'm just going to throw this out, press reset. I'm answered like this. I feel like. Saying love is unconditional is cute. I don't feel, like I like the idea of it. It sounds beautiful, right? Like, oh, I would love to be, but, and maybe familial love is that. It's longstanding love. It's the love I have for my mother is absolutely unconditional. The love I have for my dad was absolutely unconditional. Um, siblings, <laughs> just times. a notch under there, right, okay. No, I'ma love them though. I'm a love them, okay? My love is there. Relationship wise or relationally, whether it's natural or it's intentional, if your language isn't spoken, see, sometimes it's just natural. Like, I'm just, I'm not happy. He just misses it. Like, he keeps buying me handbags and shoes and. Yeah. Talking yeah, about yeah. giving me a card. I'm like, I want your time. You don't touch me. Where's the snuggling? Where's the, I don't feel the love. You could throw all the money you want at me. He didn't do that? 
Huh? That's what he did? Who? Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought that's what you were saying. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't touch Actually, me. well. Stay away. Damn, man. <laughs> I just, hey, just want to. Oh, back to unconditional. Yeah. Okay, yeah. back to unconditional. Roast his ass. <laughs> roast his ass. I just he over here trying. Please roast him. I have no. I just feel like it's not. It's just, I don't know. The way I love, and I'm not saying you just pack up. Like, yeah, you can communicate. You can work on it. But I don't know many relationships that are unconditional for real. Like, outside baby, I'm staying. Uh, you got a whole mistress for 10 of the 15 years we've been together. I'm staying. I don't know any woman that feels like that. Yeah. Respect. You know what I'm saying? And Respect. I don't know any man that feels like, She's whack in bed, or she won't cook. Can, but won't. Was Doesn't serve my needs. I don't know a, a man that feels like, well, shit, none of my needs are being met here. I don't know a man that would just stay for what? I'm with you. You know what I mean? I think my my whole thing is like this. For, for me, it takes a lot to get to say, okay, I love or I'm in love with someone. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to open up that emotion, mm. going into it, I have to know, okay, this person is going to have some flaws that I may not like, I may not appreciate. Mm -hmm. But then, hell, I ain't perfect either, right? right. I always say 8 out of 10, 80%. Yes. We went to our MBA class. If you got an 80 on the test, you was good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not going to find, in this world, you're not going to find a 10 out of 10. It's next to never. Yeah. So if you have those two things that you can deal with and they're not part of the non-negotiables and you decide, okay, I'm going to love this person, it needs to be unconditional. If not, what's the point of doing it? But I don't, I don't think the weight is put so much on it in terms of, like, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's not more so like, well, it's an ultimatum. I think with loving somebody, we're going into the love chronicles now. <laughs> the love chronicles. But Behind you, the with love With loving map. somebody, it's always going to adjust. Yeah. And so that was one of the things that I learned about just the love languages. And, like, the more and more I, after I read it, mm -hmm. I was like, man, this shit really is true. Mm. So it's like just playing into like what really does it for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and you know, like this right here, you can probably do send her on the best trip of all time. Like wine and diner, second to none. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you miss out on the fact, if you get caught up into what you want her to value mm -hmm. versus what she, she actually values, values yeah. which is quality time, yeah. then the magic ain't gonna never happen. Yeah. But I also feel like when you're meeting someone, when you are, you're both the whole concept of the representative. Mm -hmm. So like, I can love you before I truly understand who you are. Have you ever loved someone and you're like, I didn't know she was like this. Oh, yeah. Six years in, you're like, this is who you are? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like real I can love you within a year, but I don't fully know you and fully understand mm -hmm. your, your idiosyncrasies. You know, or what makes you tick, or that you felt this way about that, something mm -hmm. I cherish, something I value, or that you don't have integrity, or, you know, you're not very virtuous, you're not very, you know, what I can learn things about you and be like, now you're stepping into my non negotiables. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think unconditional is a word we should reserve for people we truly, truly know. I think it has to grow from I'm getting to know you. And yeah, I got feelings for you. And yeah, to I feel love and we're intimate and we're we've our bond is strengthening and then da 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 and we grow into yeah. unconditional. Because why am I giving you conditional? I don't even have the commitment. Yeah. Why am I giving and they you sorry, unconditional? They haven't deserved they don't deserve it yet either though. And there's that. I'm, I'm good. Why am, we talk I, why am I loving you unconditionally oh, as no. your girlfriend? <laughs> For what? Now I got conditions. <laughs> okay? And you should have conditions too. Respect. Respect. You know? It's cool because we did an episode a few weeks ago. Okay. And it was about can exes be friends? Mm. And, you know, the platonic friendship. Yeah. Does that even exist? My man over here said <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And I had a strong, I had to draw a line in the sand, Carrie. I told him no, period, okay. because it's too much leakage. It could be too much carryover. So mm -hmm. since we have you here, a woman's perspective, mm -hmm. we would love to get your take on it. Oh, man. 
do you believe can exes be friends? And the, really, the definition of friends is like your best partner. <laughs> oh. Just so oh. we clean. Because people, oh, people okay. throw this term around loosely when they talk about friends, friends. and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And a lot of people use say that's my friend and never reveal that y'all used to be intimate. I said, I said, yeah. <laughs> a lot of men are guilty of calling everybody a friend. It's my sister. Meanwhile, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're right. But nah, not aces, not aces. That's gonna trample on or impede upon the bond you're trying to build. Um, I think even in, and I've never been in this scenario, but I have friends that ha are, even in co-parenting, you can't just be ace boom coons, taking trips together. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like there's gotta be a line yeah. in the sand when one of you or both of you are dating. Um, so I do think it's possible to be Cordial? cordial? Even more than cordial. Like, a couple times a year, catch up, da 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 But I don't know about the ace. Hanging out. I don't know about the hanging out. Going to get drinks. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying this. lunch. <laughs> yeah, how am I explaining that? Like, I'm going out with my ex, and this is why people lie. Because if you still want to do that, I feel like you should be honest about the, like, I'm good friends with one of my exes. He's married with two kids. And this is someone I would love to, for, this is my longest relationship. We were together for like 11, 10, 11 years. Um, but he's like a brother. I, neither of us have the attraction that we once had. We were super young, 17, I was 17 to 28 when we were together. So this is someone I've introduced to people that I'm dating. Mm -hmm. And I've met people that he's dating and now his wife and kids, you know, it's a great relationship there. And that's someone that I would love, but we're not, I wouldn't say best friends, you know what I mean? We're not yeah. talking, but a few times a year. We have business together, a, you know, an entity. But I think it's possible on both sides. Yeah. I think it's possible. I think there should just be honesty. I'm a big proponent of just keep it real. Yeah. You know, and don't have me around somebody that that's the case. And you can't say that you used to hit it. That's not cute. That ain't cute. Listen. We ain't but y'all be there. trying it. Yeah, y'all be trying it though. You're right. Y'all be trying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just cool. Yeah, and the girls all playing, but women always feel we we be knowing. Yeah, we some more back there mm -hmm. We may not ever say anything. I know. We may not ever say anything, but we always feel the woman to woman energy. We always know. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I can't deny it. <laughs> I've never been wrong. I was out one time at a bar with my lady, and then um, I seen somebody, you know, cross mm -hmm. the bar, and they gave a little bit too much love. Mm. She's like, they call your girlfriend. I was like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know I knew her? You know what I'm saying? The vibe was just right. a little too much, but oh, man. yeah, it, you know. Yeah. It was all right, though. It worked out. I'm still here. You're still here. Still You're here. still there. You're in there. Yeah, but, no, I, I'm with you. I think... You know, again, in my my word was cordial. Like you can be cordial. Mm -hmm. I'm not with the necessarily going to the brunch and I definitely not going on vacation. I don't care if there's kids involved, mm -hmm. unless I'm there. You know what I mean? But yeah. it ain't gonna be no. You're not invited on our vacation, and you damn sure not going on vacation with him. That's just not happening. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. this guy here, he just my way the highway guy right here. Oh. I see black and white. <laughs> so. Am I correct to assume that that might mean that you have exes that you're best friends with? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. No, I, I don't. I don't believe that we can be friends. Oh, okay. And well, what I on, what I consider is okay. is friends is like two can hit me last minute, mm -hmm. bro. I really need to talk to you. I got something going on. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to drop what I'm doing if I can. And go have a beer with him. Go have a drink. You know what I mean? If we okay. sit down and chop it up. Okay. I feel like my friendships deserve some level of priority for me to give them that. Yeah. I can't give that to, like, I, I don't see it. And I just don't see it with the opposite sex. It's like, oh, we just friends. So you just don't give him priority like that? So he can just hit you up like that? Because, mind you, I think the thing what. Listen, I'm always going to keep it a thousand, mm -hmm. a buck. The thing I have to, we all think about as men is knowing, well, 
he was with you before I was with you. So that means the shit that I know what turns you on, he already knows. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you're giving him time, chances are a flame is still there. And you're feeding the flame mm-hmm. by putting yourself in position. Oh, I was sure. always told this. Like, you can never... Good point. I'm glad you're challenging me right now. <laughs> you can never blame anybody for cheating. Like, you can't. You can't blame somebody for cheating. And I know y'all like, what you talking about? What I'm saying is you can blame a person for putting themselves in position to cheat versus the actual yeah. movement because at the end of the day, we're all flesh. Yes, And, and we're going to be moved off yes. of what motivates you and drives yes. you. Yes, you set the table. There's a lot that goes into that motivation. Wanting to be around the person, knowing that you're sexually attracted to the person, reaching out, hiding that you're engaging. You know what I mean? The engagement gets inappropriate. It's a lot of steps. It's a lot. So you're right. So once once that table is set and you're there in person and things get... Yeah, it's not the act that bothers most women. It's everything leading up to it. it. <laughs> it's like, how many, how long did, what, what went into this setup? Because you didn't just ha, happen to be in the same place at the same time. You know what I mean? There, there's always this setup, and that's what makes women, we're emotional creatures. You had to sell a dream to some degree. And in order to woman. sell a dream, it requires time. Yes. Quality Effort. time. Engagement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I agree. I think even if, I, I would never be in a, a compromising situation with my ex, especially if I'm seeing someone. I would never, we would never need to be in a room together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anything we talk about can happen via text or phone. Any phone calls can happen in front of my lover or whoever I'm with. I feel like it should be level. It should be on the table type friendship. Oh, yeah. Where there's nothing that is discussed or goes on that needs to be private everything or ha- take a call. Yeah, everything's open. I think... In that case, it's fine on both ends. And that's the way I've always operated. Like, it just ain't no secret ex out there that you don't know about and don't know what happened and don't know that he reached out and when he reached out. If you want to know, you might be like, I've been in relationships where guys like, you ain't got to tell me all that. Okay. Yeah. And I still might because I I just thrive in truth. (laughs) It's a beautiful thing. You know. So ain't nobody saved in the phone under like engineer studio and then for what? <laughs> for what? For what? I'm not saying I ain't never had to do that. Because <laughs> uh, you might date somebody and somebody out there who you used to date isn't okay, and they, you know, they might it might hit the surface or whatever, or or hit their ears in real life and they start blowing you up when they know, and now I'm spending my time with someone else mm. and I'm getting blown up. I have had to do that until I could diffuse it. And then, okay, now we got to change your name back. But you ain't about to be calling me at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Those, uh, that privilege has long been yeah. revoked, you know. That, but they, so men will start spiraling. Sounds <laughs> spiraling like that's a big, out of control. <laughs> big miscommunication there, huh? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, no. I think it's just that they get into there because I communicate um, very well. And it's not, I'm just saying effectively. Yeah. Men know where they stand in my life. Gotcha. There's never any question. I'm very expressive. That's my gift. Expression. Through music, through writing, through acting, through. And in real life, I'm that way. I'm just wired that way, right? So there's never any confusion, but I think the ego is a different kind of um it's a different kind of monster. It's a, it's a, it'll make a man spiral. Yeah. Well, we talked about, well, you actually talked about uh, the representative, mm-hmm. the ego, mm-hmm. and we created behind the mask mm-hmm. because in our world, in the football world, people use a mask, or players use a mask for protection. Mm-hmm. But in everyday life, we often have masks for protection as well mm-hmm. from harm, hurt, individuals that we don't know. You know, until yeah, you, yeah. you're comfortable enough to let it down or you're just too tired and it comes down naturally. True. So has Carrie Hilson ever wore a mask in her journey? <laughs> uh, all the time. Um, doing what I do, I have to mask sometimes that I'm sleep deprived. I have to mask that I'm, I might be inebriated. I might be, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I got a mask that um, 
there are many times throughout the course of my day, whether it's on set, whether it's, you know, shoot on a plane, whatever, where I'm wanting to say, respond to someone in a certain way. And I, I have to catch myself because I can't be Carrie Lynn. I got to be Carrie Hilson. <laughs> and um, respond accordingly. And that gets tiring, yeah. you know? Like, I wouldn't say I'm very masked in my real life. I've got a real good tribe. All my friends have been my friends since elementary age. Um, and, you know, maybe a couple a little bit later, but all are at least 20 years, you know? My friends are my friends, my family. Um, but I lose sight sometimes that I need to be guarded. Mm. And um, because in real life, I'm such an open book. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets tiring because you, you have to remember to, that mask right there, you got to remember to put it up, yeah. that people perceive you a certain way and it's, it's, people make you feel like it's so much part of your job to not be seen as mm-hmm. human, mm-hmm. to be seen as, and it's hard for me to turn that switch on because I don't feel like I'm higher than anybody. I don't feel like I'm superior to anyone. Not a janitor, not a you know, flight attendant, not a person working a register at any store or restaurant. Or, you know, I, I, I'm, I wasn't raised that way. And I, I've never genuinely had those feelings where I feel that ain't me. So it got tiring to, to have to live up to what your label, what your handlers, what your management, you know, these things that people are telling you to do, like, damn, I can't ever dress down. Yeah. I got to put on makeup to go to fly. Just because it's you your know profession. how unhealthy that is? Because of your profession. Because of my profession yeah. and because of how the expectations of my profession. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you need to get a couple more cars. You know what I mean? Or, oh, hey, you should get, you know, and it's all these suggestions of like, and, and at the end of the day, these are all masks. And I think a big part of why I stepped away from releasing music and being active, I mean, it's, it's faceted, but a big part was I got tired of masking my authentic feelings. I got tired of masking and defending who I truly am because people were judging the mask. Mm. <laughs> You know, I would try my best wow. at diffusing certain things, and I was, they didn't like the mask. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show them me. They don't know me. They're judging this. They're criticizing, they're crucifying this. So um, it was a big reason. I was like, man, not only am I now in a place where I kind of, you lose yourself, you mask so long, you believe your lies. You can, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. You start to believe this about yourself and how you're perceived. You, you start living from that place of the ego that you've, which is basically just a wall that you've built around yourself. And you start to live there and dwell there and you're not free. So for me, it was, now I got to kind of backtrack and see, remember who I am. Mm. Remember who I was before all this. And then I'd like to be solid in that and be content with that. I'd like to work on my deficits and voids and um, heal some pains and, and, and be completely before I jump back into that. Because I, I never wanted to approach this music thing with a mask on. I felt I, I've always felt I was good enough. You know, I'm excellent at everything I do. Right. <laughs> Sports, you know, whatever I try, I, that gene of like, I can do this and I can do this well, is honest, it's there. You know, when you say someone is excellent, that excellent gene where you're going to excel, the mm-hmm. true meaning of that, that's me. I'm going to excel. I'm going to try hard. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. Okay? So I never expected my life to look like that, to feel like, and I felt, I always felt like, you know what, people would like me if they truly knew who I was. But to that point, mm-hmm. when you got tired of defending the mask, mm-hmm. Because that's what everybody knew. Mm-hmm. When you decided to pull the mask down, mm-hmm. who was Carrie Hills? Carrie. Some of the things that you like to truly yeah. like to do. Yeah. That 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 sums up you. Yeah. 
I am an athlete. I am a believer in God, a spiritual person. I am a person who is humble. I'm wise. I'm creative. Um, I'm very expressive. I'm very, and I, I like to speak, um, I speak very disjointed because I like to speak truth. That's just who I am. So if I'm, people can take it like, she's lying. Look how she paused or, or hesitated. It's not hesitation. It's just that I'm trying to find the perfect word. Mm. Yeah. I, I love and, and thrive off of expression and I know, I know the importance of words. So I want to find the perfect one so that I'm never misunderstood. And some of that probably came from, it was, I, I was always like that, but some of that probably came from being so misunderstood publicly. I remember watching, looking back at interviews and just seeing how carefully I was speaking. It's not because I was lying, it's because I'm trying to find the words to tell the truth, and, but I was also protecting people. Um, anyway, not to get back on that. I am, um, I have a lot of integrity. And I think that would sum up some of the other things that I would use to describe myself. There's a lot of integrity here. Um, I believe I can do a lot of things well. Um, yeah. I'm a daughter. I'm one of five children. I have three sisters and a brother. I'm a sibling. I'm an aunt <laughs> to what, six, I think now. Um, I'm, a, I'm a grieving child. Um, having lost one of my best friends in life, my dad, um, who like never missed a game. Never missed a game. It's just like, and sometimes, um, well, all the time. I miss that. He was my cheerleader. He sang. My gift came from him. Hmm. My love of sports came from him. My he was an orator. My, you know, eloquence and articulation came from him. So um, I'm a grieving daughter. You know, someone who misses that male presence. You called it. <laughs> you said. Um, but yeah. That's who I am. I'm a Southern girl. I'm someone is fine. Oh. Southern girl, you know. I'm someone who enjoys an occasional drink. Um, I love to have a good time. Um, I love sneakers. Sneakerhead. <laughs> Sneakerhead. You saw it. I ain't come in like this. <laughs> <laughs> but they look good though thank you they, I'll take the real tissue please only cause that's gonna move the makeup and you know we don't want that thank you yeah that's all I mean just to get... some days you can do it some days you can have that combo yeah, yeah and talk about it and you just can't predict when it's gonna it's hit gonna you hit just like, cause it's real it's human we all literally will understand what that feels like one day yeah. it's painful i can definitely tell you living your truth though yeah thank you and uh that's sorry to hear about pops thank you on a brighter note yeah. um <laughs> your birthday yeah is in the same uh I've hit you a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We we both Sagittarius. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That's how I, I notice everybody's birthdays in the month of December. Yeah. Everybody's, huh? Yours Everyone is, you're surrounded by. Yeah, like, you know, people who I'm surrounded by. Uh huh. Uh, what is yours? Is like what the seventh or something? The fifth. The fifth. Yeah. I know it's early. Uh -huh. I got a couple of homeboys early in that area. Okay. Yeah. So that's when you took that trip to Antigua. Yes. Did I say that right? Antigua or Antigu well, Antigua? When you're there, they say Antigua. Antigua. But, you know, the flight attendants be like, Antigua. 
<laughs> oh, I'm gonna fly to Tampa. <laughs> you guys are on your way to Antigua. So I don't know. It's either. It's whatever it is, but it's a beautiful place. And that was a solo trip. It was a solo trip. My first. My first. I had a blast. I'd be scared to go somewhere by myself. Scared? Yeah. Like, look how big you are. What you mean scared? I like, look, Dad. I'm like, <laughs> if I go somewhere and I don't see somebody I know, that means I don't need to be there. I've what do you always think thought that. Happen? Is this a New York thing? Is yes, this like you gotta mentality. Listen, I gotta see somebody I know. Man, what fun is it going? Just go downtown then. <laughs> I don't want to see. see I don't want to see everybody I know. I just want to see somebody, somebody I know. You know. Yeah, that's all. That's the reason why I don't like going to the Bahamas. Because you're gonna see people yeah. you know. Yeah, and yeah. not just people you know. People right here in the A. Mm. But see, I was I grew up as an only child, so for me, it's like I I always had the the urge to, what are my friends doing? What is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And even when I got back with my brother, it's like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? You mm. know, he used to be with, with me on all the trips. I had to find somebody. Like, where y'all at? Really? <laughs> yeah. You always want a sibling. Well, I have, I have a brother, but we just oh. didn't grow up in the same house. Oh, okay. So okay. when we finally, like, really connected, it was oh, like. Oh, I see. He took him on his first trip, and oh. he's been. He's been to Rio with us, like every vacation. Oh, oh, can my brother come? Can my brother, you know, yeah, so. Oh, that's dope. But Maybe trip. you should add that to your love language. What? That he's Which the brother. He the brother to... must be included. No, he, he, he needs uh. to go somewhere where you know somebody. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's part yeah, of your love language. Let's do it, man. Mm. But the trip was dope. Yeah, right. I had a good time. I didn't know I was that fun. I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Because I'm quite content alone. I spend yeah. 90% of my life, maybe more. Mm. That's a big misconception. Mm. You know what I mean? That Pete, that I'm so, I, I, I think I'm, I come up, I come across more social than I actually am. Because when I am around people, like I can, I'm relaxed. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? Authentic, genuine and all that. But, and I appear to be open, but I, I like being alone. I like me. Mm. So, when I took that solo trip, I was like, dang, man, yeah, you the shit. I had a good old time. Proud of yourself, too, were, and weren't you? I was you? proud, because like, I didn't know I could. The only thing that held me back was being a woman right. and then being well-known. Because usually when I go to another country or, you know, within an hour, the entire staff knows you're there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? The whole resort. The whole resort knows you're there. And... um. And that does happen, but I didn't know I could feel safe. And actually, that's a certain safety because they're not going to be messing with you if they understand who they you are. Because yeah. yeah. they know you're going to call a fuss. It's going to be lawyers. It's going to be people knocking at their door. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you're about to be blasted. Somebody around here is about to, our whole hotel is going to go down in flames because you can't, you know. So, yeah, but I had a good old, I, it was safety for me. And once I felt safe, Now that you've shared who you are mm-hmm. behind the mask, mm-hmm. looking back, and if you had the opportunity to tell your younger self, mm-hmm. or give your younger self some type of advice, mm-hmm. what would that be? <sighs> hmm. That advice would be, without a doubt, I would tell my younger self, you don't have to have it the way they tell you. you you got to have it. Hmm many ways to skin a cat. <laughs> if that's what you're trying to do, you can do it your way. You can have it exactly the way it was designed for you. There is no blueprint. There is no protocol, no, you know, that you must follow. It's for you. And the evidence, looking back, is in the fact that <laughs> I really didn't pursue things, just, it was like picking up breadcrumbs my whole life. Mm. My whole life. But then I lost my way listening, because they tell you when you come in, when you, when you begin to be an artist, the biggest, the number one thing you always hear is the best artists listen. The best artists know how to listen, know who to listen to, and know how to follow directions. You hear these kinds of things, they're programming you mm. to not be authentic, mm. so that you're controllable. And... I heard that so many times. I'm just like, damn, so am I not good enough or am I? Because why are you interested in me if I got to be like that? I have my own set of skills. I have my own set of W's and my own set of L's. 
<laughs> but, you know, so I would say that. You can have it the way that's designed for you, the way that's comfortable. You don't have to follow um, anyone's advice or anyone's um, pressure or force. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was always meant to happen, and I've always known that. So I never needed to veer from who I am. So your template is your template. <laughs> Salute to that. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Behind the mask.